Hello and welcome to LearnHowToQuilt.com. I'm Anne and today I'll be reviewing this pattern that I think makes a great beginner project. This comes from Laundry Basket Quilts and actually it's not a pattern that I used but this stencil. The first time I saw this quilt was in, at a quilt shop in Amarillo, Texas. It was hanging right behind the cash register and it was done up in all bright colors. Every elephant was different and I just loved it. When I went to buy the pattern, they were out of it, but they told me I could purchase a stencil. So I couldn't wait to get home to try it out. I had this blue and white fabric sitting out. So I made up an elephant just to see if I could use fusible and it, it worked okay, but I wanted to try out some other things. So before I get to the different methods that I tried, I want to use a checklist to explain why I think this is a good beginner project. First, if you're a beginner, you'll want to purchase a complete pattern that, that gives you all the yardage requirements and the cutting sizes with directions on how to put it together. If you buy the stencil, you'll just have to figure these things out on your own. So it's much easier with the pattern. This quilt features simple piecing with straight line sewing. You'll just be sewing these rectangles together in rows. It might look complicated with these elephant appliques, but the actual sewing that you'll do is straight line sewing. This project is also a great size for a beginner. The pattern is a lap quilt made up with 24 elephants, but you could make a small wall hanging with just four or just a single one. Choosing fabric is easy for this quilt. All you need is one for the background, one for the body, and one for the ear and tail. You can even add a fourth fabric if you want to mix it up. This ear and tail are both different. I've seen this quilt made up in so many different pattern fabrics from wild prints to solids to what I call Civil War era prints. And anyway, it always looks great. Beginners can be confident that whatever they choose, it'll go together perfectly. If you like the scrappy look, but don't have a lot of scraps, or don't want to buy lots of yardage, try purchasing a pack of layer cakes. From each 10 inch square, you can get the elephant's body and the ear and tail that you can mix or match with other layer cakes. Or set up a fabric exchange. Below you'll find links to videos with more detailed instructions so by now you might be having questions about this applique elephant because it doesn't look so beginner friendly. It's pretty easy if you use two-sided fusible applique, which means you'll trace this elephant, then press that to the back of your fabric. You do have to cut these out by hand, but it usually goes pretty fast if you listen to the TV or music while you're doing it. After the elephant's cut out, peel off the paper and you have a fusible applique. Just repeat this process with the ear and the tail and fuse it onto the background. The applique will hold if using as a wall hanging, but if you're gonna be washing this project, you'll wanna stitch around the edges. I just used a straight stitch about a 16th to an eighth away, all the way around, just to ensure that it holds up in the wash. Now I did try some other applique techniques. So first I tried no fusible, just a raw edge. I cut out the elephant, I laid it on the background, and then I did a small zigzag stitch all the way around the edges. Now when you wash this, you're gonna get some fraying. As a matter of fact, on the tail, I tried a straight stitch and I got a lot of fraying, but that's part of the look that I don't care for so much, especially on these elephants. Now you might be saying that you don't notice a difference between this one and this one, and you're right. Um, but after washing, you will see more fraying around these edges. So the good thing about this, it'll save you money because you don't have to buy any fusible and time because you don't have to worry about making a fusible applique. But this bo elephant's body is a pretty big piece to have to deal with when stitching around the edges. You have to be real careful that everything's in place before you stitch. So what I finally ended up doing is using fusible, 
but only a little sliver of it. I traced around the elephant and then I cut out most of the inside and then I cut about a quarter inch all the way around. And I took this and pressed it to the fabric. I don't recommend this for beginners because it gets kind of messy when you're trying to press this onto the background. By doing it this way, just this area has fusible on it, and this area is free. The same thing of the ears. You don't have to worry about the stiffness of the elephant. As a matter of fact, when you quilt it, you can make it kind of poofy. If you decide you want to try hand appliqueing, just trace the elephant on the back of your fabric. Instead of cutting out on the lines, you'll need to add seam allowance. So I like to eyeball about a quarter inch all the way around when I cut it out. Below you'll find links to videos with more detailed instructions about different hand applique techniques. No matter which method you use, as a beginner, you'll want to make some adjustments to the pattern. These little areas where there's a corner on the outside or a crevice on the inside are a little more challenging. It'd be nice if you didn't have to worry about those, but just about any shape except for an oval or a circle, you're going to encounter those. So it's good to learn how to deal with them. This area in the mouth where there's a point in a crevice, and then this area on the trunk where there's two points and a crevice are much more difficult. So what I like to do is just cut those out. Just do away with those on the pattern. You'll still have some corners here that are challenging, but, but not as bad as before. The tail is also difficult to hand applique because it's so narrow. Remember, you've got that quarter inch seam allowance that you have to turn under and you get a lot of bulk in here. So if you're set on hand appliqueing, you could try this out or make an elephant without a tail or use a different material to make your tail. This is pearlized cotton that I decided to use. So if you're a beginner and you like appliqueing or you want to learn how to applique by hand, this would probably be a good pattern as long as you cut out this section here and top this off. Hope you decide to make one of these quilts. As I said earlier, this is a fun quilt to make and it looks good in any fabric that you choose. If you'd like to purchase a pattern with directions, yardage requirements, and information on how to put the quilt together, you can go to laundrybasketquilts.com or you can just purchase a stencil at their site. I've listed the links below, but sometimes I have difficulty with those links. So I'm gonna show you their site once you hit applique, you scroll down and you'll see the elephant quilt and right next to it is a pillow pattern for the elephant. If you click on the elephant quilt and then scroll down, that's where you'll find the stencil. And I really recommend that you buy the stencil along with the pattern because it makes it so easy to trace. Hope you decide to make one of these quilts. As I said earlier, this is a fun quilt to make and it looks good in any fabric that you choose. Thanks for watching our video. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact me at ann at learnhowtoquilt.com or leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And remember to check back in on the fourth Thursday of the month when we review beginner patterns. Thanks.